and welcome. My name is Hayden Falzon from BlenderTutorials.org. We're going to be creating holographic effects in Blender without using volumetrics. We are going to be making three holographic materials, each one increasing in difficulty. And finally, we're going to be looking at how to create this star map effect using mostly modifiers, as well as a little bit of the new geometry node system in Blender 2.9. Now, before we jump into that, let's talk about where I've been for the last six months and what I've been working for. This picture in the background might give you a little hint. So I've actually been working on a new service to help new people and intermediates, especially in Blender, learn in a far quicker fashion. That's blendertutorials.org. Now, right now, it's still not released. I'm still working on it quite heavily. In saying that I'm still gonna be doing YouTube tutorials, now, some of you might be thinking, oh, it's just a course. Couldn't be further from the truth. This is not a course. This is unlike anything I have seen out there as of yet. And I can't show you just yet what I mean by that, but I'm really excited to show everyone this new service. And I just think it's going to be really cool. And I, I just can't wait to show you. So if you haven't already, please hit that subscribe and bell button to be notified on a new video's release because I'm going to be releasing new videos very soon in regards to the service and you might be able to snag yourself a really, really, really good deal. I have some plans, but I will talk about that later. For now, let's jump into this tutorial. Let's first start by opening Blender up and creating a new scene. Let's delete the default cube as per usual. So X to delete and delete. We're now gonna add an icosphere to example this material type. So Shift A to add and then icosphere. Perfect. So now that I have this icosphere, I'm gonna to wanna to go into the shading workspace. So now that I'm in the shading workspace, I'm going to come over to my material slots or I could simply press this new button down here. So let's just hit this new button for now and I'm gonna call this material simple hologram. All that I did there was I clicked in this namespace to rename that. Now, this simple hologram material that we're about to create is actually going to set us up for understanding the more complex node trees that we're going to create a little down the road. This material will also be perfect for little holographic lights. The first step is to delete the principled BSDF shader. So make sure that you have it selected. You can tell that it is selected because it will be outlined with a little white border. X to delete. And now I'm going to cover over this material properties tab over here, bring that up, and we're going to change a few of the settings in this material. So make sure that your settings submenu is dropped down so you can see all of this. We're going to change the blend mode to be alpha blend. This is just going to ensure that any transparency that we use blends nicely. Another thing that we could potentially do is turn the shadow mode to be none because we don't want this object to cast any shadows. That would be bad. Okay, so now that we've done that very simple setup, we're now gonna jump into creating this uh, node tree. So let's add a few nodes. First, let's add an emission shader. Make sure that your cursor is inside of the shader editor. So shift A, I'm gonna search for this, so emission. And then I'm gonna press enter and just place it around here. Next, I'm gonna grab a transparent BSDF node. So shift A, navigate down to your shaders and find your transparent BSDF node. You can also find your emission in here as well because it is a shader type node. So I'll click on the transparent BSDF, bring it in, and now I'm gonna mix these two values with a mix shader. So let's shift A, shader, mix shader, and we'll drop that in. So now I can just 
connect this emission into the first input of my mix and this transparent into the second input for my mix. I'll then put the output of the mix into the surface input of our material output. <laughs> so a lot of words there. So I almost tongue tied myself. Okay. So now that I've done that, we need to actually make this look a little bit more holographic. Let's turn this color and make it blue. Let's also turn up the strength to three. Perfect. I'm going to make this a little bit more vibrant blue. So maybe, maybe somewhere around here. I think that looks good. Perfect. Now, to finally sell this effect, we're going to add one more node, and that's the layer weight node. Let's press Shift A, Input, and Layer Weight. Perfect. We're then going to take the facing value and place it into the factor input of our mix shader. We should see an effect already beginning to appear. We're then going to turn this blend value to 0.9 or thereabouts. Now, right now, it's not looking very great. With our object selected, we can tell that it's selected because it has this orange outline around it. I'm going to right click to get my object context menu and press shade smooth. You can also come up here to the object context menu here. And as you can see, making it smooth, so what we've actually essentially done is we've interpolated the split normals so that it is smooth. Uh, it's fixed that issue right up, which is exactly what we want. Okay, so that's looking really nice. And this is the basis of the effect that we're going to create. There is something missing, however. The brightness, I feel, is a little bit, well, dull. And we can see this even clearer if I change the material preview and turn on the scene world in the viewport shading options, just so I can see a little bit better. And as you can see, it's not that bright. Now, we could turn up the emission strength, but I I'm not going to do that. Instead, what I find works quite well is adding an add shader in here. So I'm going to press Shift A, and we're going to go to the shader, and then add shader. Now, just drag and drop it when you see that the wire from the emission to the mix highlights. So just click with your left mouse button, and that should connect the two. Now, nothing has changed yet because we now are going to connect this transparent BSDF into the add shader. Now. If we just mute this, we should see that that has added a little bit of a glow to the inside. It's a nice effect, I think. So that's what I've done. And by the way, if you want to mute any node, you just press M on your keyboard. M for mute. Okay. So here is our simple hologram shader setup. Now, this is a very simple, and there's a lot of other ways that we could have done this, but this is the way that I like to do it for this EV-based material. Now, there are some limitations to this setup. Let me show you. I'm going to add Suzanne into this scene. So I'm going to go back to the layout workspace, Shift A to add, and I'm going to add a mesh type monkey. I'm then going to move that monkey to the side a little bit. I'm going to shade smooth, just like the icosphere. So right click, shade smooth. And then I'm going to apply that material we just created by going to the material properties and going over to this little drop down menu and searching for that simple hologram material. So I've placed that simple hologram material into the material slot in our Suzanne. And if we take a look now, we should see it's okay, but you know, it's not. Great. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to duplicate this icosphere just so that we have another one to work on. So Shift D to duplicate. 
and then I'll just press X to constrain it to the X axis and put that over there. I'll call this simple sphere. So I renamed it in the outliner by double clicking it. Perfect. So I'm gonna jump back into the shading workspace and I'm gonna come down to my shader editor and Right now, this little three here is actually representing how many instances of this material are currently being used. So currently there are three. So I'm just gonna click on this button to create a unique material based on the simple hologram because we're gonna be using this as a, the basis for our next material. I'm gonna call this a little more advanced hologram. So, you know, there we go. What a name. So what we're going to do is we're actually going to remove this layer weight for now temporarily. So just click and drag from this wire here to disconnect it and place it up there. So we're just going to leave that layer weight up there for now. And now we're going to construct a new mask essentially to emulate the fall off of light in an upwards direction. If we think about a hologram or what a hologram essentially is, it's a light that's being projected up into some sort of medium, whether that be a gas, glass, or some other refractive medium, at least in science fiction. We're gonna emulate the light kind of fading away as it travels further from the source. So we're gonna create a gradient mask that goes from the bottom of the object to the top of the object. And I think this will add a really nice effect. So to do that, let's first create this mask. Let's come over here and we're going to add uh, a texture coordinate node. So shift A, input texture coordinate. Then we're gonna get a mapping node. You wanna then create a mapping node. So go and press shift A, go down to vector because it's a vector node and then find mapping. We're gonna place the generated output into the vector input up here. We're then gonna set the Y rotation to be 90 degrees. Let me show you what this is doing so far. I can do that by simply placing this vector output into the surface input of a material output node. You don't have to do this. I'm just doing it to show you and illustrate what this setup is doing. As you can see, it looks pretty horrendous at the moment. There's a reason for this. We need to set up one more thing in our material settings. Let's go to our material settings and let's turn off back face culling. As you can see that instantly fixes the artifacting problem, which is great. So now that that problem has been fixed, let's now create a gradient texture node. So shift A, navigate to your texture, gradient texture. I'm then going to connect the mapping to the gradient texture. Now, because it's light that we're emulating, we want the light to fall off in a believable way. We're gonna use a quadratic interpolation with our gradient. So from the drop down menu in the node, let's go from linear and change it to quadratic. Perfect. So now that we've done that, let's add one final node to this. That is gonna be the color ramp node, my favorite node of all time. I use this node excessively, far more than I really should, but that's another problem. So I'm gonna go shift A, and then I'm gonna to go to converter color ramp, and then we're gonna drop that in there. Perfect. Now, the reason why I'm dropping a color ramp in there is so we can control this light a little bit more. I'm gonna change the interpolation type to be B spline. And then I'm gonna drag this white value down to 0 0.3, 0 0.35. So down to about here. Of course, you can just type it if you really want to. And that's going to be 
providing our light mask. Perfect. So let's set this up. Perfect. Let's set this up. So I'm going to take this color ramp and I'm going to put the color output into the factor input of our mix shader. Let me also move this shader output into the surface input. And as you can see, we're getting a nice gradual uh, fading effect on our, on our hologram. I'm also going to just box select these, so click and drag, and then move them all to the side here, just so it's a little bit more organized. And now we're going to add in our final piece to the puzzle. We're going to duplicate this mix shader here. So select it, make sure it's got that outline around it. And then let's press Shift D to duplicate and plonk it over here. Perfect. We then want to place our old facing layer weight node into the factor input and then take the transparent BSDF and place it into the second shader input of our mix shader. And now we should see that there's a little bit of a difference between these two. This one fades out closer towards the top and we can control that fade by just controlling the value of this slider here. So I think that's just a really nice and subtle effect that adds a lot to this shader. Perfect. Okay, so we've actually now constructed a fairly competent shader for displaying a hologram. But now we need the shapes to place this material onto so it actually looks cool. So the, the shapes that we're going to build, I'm going to move this one. So let's go back to layout. I'm going to move this one over here and I'm going to delete this one. Don't worry about deleting items with materials on it. The materials are saved into the Blender file. Think of materials as paint on a painter's palette. So I deleted it with X and now I'm going to press Shift A and I'm going to create a cylinder. Perfect. So this cylinder is going to act as that conical shape that we saw in the first part of the video. To get the conical shape, I first have to shrink the base of the cylinder or I could alternatively enlarge the top of it or I could do both. So let's do that now. Let's go into edit mode by pressing tab and then I'm going to go to face select mode from the selection filters, select my top face, scale it up with S, S for scale as I like to say, Come down to here, select the bottom face, S for scale, but scale it down. Okay, so we've created our little cone here. Let's also give it a bit of a procedural effect so it's a bit more smooth. Come to our modifiers, properties, add a subdivision surface. Now, right now it's not gonna work all too well. Uh, to crease the edges, all that you're gonna do is go back into edit mode, select the edge that you want to crease and in our case we want the bottom and the top face so just shift and click on both of them to select them the shortcut shift e to increase the crease that was not intentional and then we can just increase our subdivision level maybe to two you can go as high as you want but for this example let's go to two now Let's drop down to our materials and let's give it a, a little more advanced hologram. Let's see what this looks like with our material preview. Mm, that's looking nice. I also like the effect how it kind of fades out depending on how you're looking at it. Now, I personally really like the effect, but if you don't, if you don't, we can fix this. All that we're going to do to fix it is go to your settings in your material properties and turn off the back face culling. Doing so will, uh, as you can see, 
remove that fade as you get to a glancing view. But that is going to bring back the artifacting, especially when we shade this object smooth, which we did for the other two. So let's do that quickly. Right click, shade smooth. As you can see, those artifacting problems that we saw when we created that lighting mask has returned. There is a way to fix this. What I'm gonna recommend that you do to fix this on this particular object is come over here to the object data properties and turn on auto smooth. That's gonna give us a, essentially what that's gonna do is it's gonna look at the angle of any edge and it's going to then determine whether or not that edge should have split normals. The split normals essentially refer to how smooth something is, uh, how light reacts to it. So, if, so I can actually show you this. I go into edit mode and turn on my vertex normals like so. And I turn off this auto smooth, we can see the difference. So having split normals like this is going to give the effect of a very hard edge. You don't really need to know all this, by the way, this is just a little bit of extra information. Uh, and that's essentially what is happening behind the scenes. Okay. Let me turn that off just so it's not in the way. So that's fixed that problem up mostly. And I think that's looking really nice now. So remember, if you don't like that effect, we can fix it. You just got to make sure that auto smooth is on and your object is smooth. Perfect. So this is the first shape that we've created. Let's just duplicate this shape and use it to construct the next one. So I'm going to press shift and D and I'm then going to press X to move it on the X axis. So now that I've done that, I'm just going to create a very quick loop in here by pressing Control and R and hovering inside there. It's going to give me a little yellow circle. Once you see that yellow circle, simply press left click and then escape. Perfect. Let's go to face select mode. I'm going to select that top face and scale it in. I'm going to scale that bottom one in as well. And let's scale, let's grab this loop here. So to grab the loop, simply hover your cursor somewhere in between the edges like so. Make sure you're in edge select mode. Hold Alt down and click. Then just scale that in. So that's going to create a really nice spotlight effect for our, our hologram. And we can actually take this shape I'm going to rename it in our outliner because renaming is very important in 3D. I'm going to call this spotlight. And I'm going to call this cylinder here. I'm going to call this uh, hologram projection. Pro or in fact, let's call it hologram projector. If I can spell. Looks right. I hope. You will all judge me later if it isn't. So now we can take this spotlight and let's just shrink it down a little bit with S for scale and move it inside of our other light here. In fact, what I'll do is I'll just leave it off to the side for now. Let's just create some uh, copies of it. And I'm gonna use Shift and D and I might scale this one up on Z. So S and Z to scale on Z, like so. And then I'll duplicate this one again. Make sure that you're rotating them in, in nice ways. You wanna create a bit of variance, like so. So I'll duplicate this one, rotate it a bit off to the side and scale it up a little bit. Maybe scale it up down, like so. Now this is where your artistic touch is going to come into play. Is it looking nice? What, where could you balance it a little bit? So for me, I'm probably just gonna balance it by just kind of placing this one in the center here. That's looking a little bit better now. And let's go to the 
other side here. I'm just going to rotate that around. It's looking nice. I'm orbiting it just to kind of make sure it looks right. I'm going to grab this one and I'm actually going to duplicate it and I'm going to rotate it this way and replace that other one if I can grab it with it. Just so that there is different sizes at different places, something like something like that. I think that's looking nice. Perfect. Now don't worry about this uh, area down here because we're going to cover that up with some sort of holographic projector later on. So now that we've got that looking nice, I'm just going to move that over here. We can now move on to creating the final material, which is where we're going to add a sort of digitized version of this. This is, if you're more into the sort of Star Wars hologram, this is the effect that you're looking for. So I'm going to duplicate this with Shift D and move it over to work on it and show you how to set this uh, digital uh, setup. And the way we're going to do it, let's go to our shading workspace again. You guessed it, we're going to create a unique copy of a little more advanced hologram. And I'm going to rename this to be digital hologram as such. Let's move this layer weight mix shader and output and move it over to the right because we're going to create a new mix node right in here. So shift A, shader, mix shader, and wait till the wire lights up and drop it by left clicking. Now that you've done that, we're going to create a few more nodes. We're going to create another texture coordinate node and a mapping node. So we may as well just grab them straight from here. So shift and click on them and then use shift D to duplicate them to move them up here. We're going to change them a little bit. I'm going to get the window output from the texture coordinate and put it into the vector input of our mapping. Then I'm going to change this Y back to zero. After I've done that, I'm going to create a new texture type. This time it's going to be a noise texture. So shift A, texture, and go to noise texture. Take the vector output and put it into the vector input of this noise texture. I'm going to make this scale really high, maybe 100. That's looking good. And I'm going to turn the roughness to 1. Now I'm going to change the X scale to 0. What that's going to do is it's going to compress the noise texture onto itself so that it has 0 height. All the other directions will be completely overwhelming for it and we'll get a layered effect, which is exactly what we're looking for for this digital hologram. After that, we're going to use a color ramp node. So shift A again, converter, color ramp, my favorite node. Get the factor output into the factor input and just play around with these values. So it's looking something like this. You want a bit of black here and a bit of white here. Now we're going to take the output from this color ramp and place it into the factor input of that mix shader. As you can see, we're already getting a nice result, but there's one final thing that we have to do. And that's right, we're going to take this transparent BSDF and place it into the mix shader. So we're mixing between our result and transparent. And that's going to give us a nice digital look. So wherever we look now is going to be a nice uh, ramp like this. And that's really all there is to it. As I said before, I'm not going to use this one just because I, I like the look of the cleaner hologram. But if you do want to use this, by all means. We've actually already created a fairly decent scene with the elements that we created with our holographic materials. So now what we can do just to sort of spice this up is add a bit of a, a hollow plate if you want. We can do that 
by just adding, let's add a basic cylinder to this and let's scale it. Uh, let's go into edit mode, scale it down on Z. So S and Z for those of you who are wondering. And I'll press S to scale it down. And then I'm gonna move it on Z as well. So G and Z, move it down. And I, I wanna go to roughly here. Because then what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab the face here, inset it with I, I for inset, pull that in. And then I'm going to do E for extrude. So press E and pull that down just a little bit and press left click. Be very careful with extrude because if you cancel an extrude with escape, it technically doesn't cancel it. It just cancels the movement that it puts you into afterwards. So then you get overlapping polygons which isn't great. Okay, so now that I've done that, I'm just going to create two new materials on here. So let's create some two new slots by just creating, by pressing this plus button over here. Okay, let's create a new one in here. I'm gonna call this metal. Very simple setup here. I'm just gonna pull up the metallic value to maybe around 0 0.9 and the roughness down to 0. 2, 5 or thereabouts. Nothing fancy. After that, I'm also going to then go to my next slot, new. I'm going to call this one emission. If I can spell. I'm going to delete the principled BSDF. And then I'm going to add an emission node. Yes, you can use the principled BSDF for emission, but why would you when there is a simple emission node like this one? And then I'm going to assign this emission to that face there. So I make sure that I have that face selected and then I'm going to assign while, while making sure that I have my emission selected. Ooh. Perfect. Now we can make this uh, a nice blue color to kind of match our light like so looking really nice so far now it's time to create the subject of our hologram which is going to be that planetary system or star system holographic display that i showed you at the beginning of this what i'm assuming is going to be a fairly long tutorial wish me luck editing before we move on i just want you to take a break i know it's been a while uh, and while we take a break, let's talk a little bit more about BlenderTutorials.org. So BlenderTutorials.org, one of the, the primary pillars of the whole setup is it's meant to be a service that is dedicated to training people in how to use Blender effectively. And if you want to learn more about it, definitely hit the subscribe and ring that bell button to be notified on a new video's release because I'm gonna be releasing new videos that is going to outline exactly what Blender Tutorials is about. I can't say so just now because it's still in development, but I'm just really working hard just to iron out any bugs in the website and make sure that it is a fabulous experience for you. I think you're all really, really going to enjoy it and. I don't think you're going to expect what it, it exactly is. It's not a course at all. Courses are a part of it, but it's not a course. <laughs> I'm very excited and I can't wait for you to see. And that is essentially where I've been for the past six months, not posting on YouTube. I've been building this new website for people like me who, well, when I was learning Blender, I always found it really challenging because... I would always search for things and questions would lead to two more questions and it just became a bit of a nightmare. And I really want this service to act as a one-stop port of call for people who want to jump into Blender. But enough of that. Let's go back to the tutorial and let's focus how to create that space scene that I showed you at the beginning. So to do that, we're actually gonna create an icosphere. 
So shift A to add, make sure you're in object mode. In fact, let's also go to layout while we're there. <laughs> Maybe a little bit better. I'm just gonna click on this object here and press numpad period to focus on it. You can also go to view and frame selected. Make sure you have an object selected though before you press that. So once I've done that, I'm going to press shift and A to add an icosphere. You can subdivide this how many times you want. Essentially, the more subdivisions, the more stars are going to be in your system. I'm going to leave it at default for now. And we're going to go into edit mode by pressing tab. Now, after I've done that, I'm going to switch over to vertex selection mode. And I'm also going to delete all the faces. So press X to delete. Don't press faces. Only press only faces. What that's going to do is it's only going to delete the faces. It's not going to delete the edges or the vertices. So I've done that. Um, and now what we can do is we can select a random amount of vertices and then delete them. Let's do that by going up to select and then select random. We can change the percentage of our selection by just bringing up this menu up here. If you lose it, just press function nine. And then I'm going to, I think that looks good. I'm gonna delete it by pressing X vertices. So each one of these vertices are going to represent a planet or a star. You can delete other vertices manually if you wanna sort of art direct it. Um, I'm gonna do something like that. I want sort of like a little, in fact, I'm gonna, yeah, I'll delete that one. Don't like it. Okay, I think that looks really good. So now it's time to make it look good. <laughs> hey there, Hayden from the future. I just wanna quickly correct a mistake that I make during the next part of this video. In the next part, I scale down the remains of the icosphere without first changing the pivot point of my tool. The reason why this is important is because we deleted a lot of the icosphere using a random selection. So if I just do that very quickly again, if I then select everything with A for all, and then go to my scale tool, notice how the scale tool is actually centered not on the on what used to be the center of the object. And this is because by default, the pivot point is set to median, the median being the average position of all your selection. So what you wanna do is you wanna come up here to the pivot point and you wanna change it to either the 3D cursor if your icosphere is uh, on the 3D cursor still, or the bounding box center. And that will just allow you to scale the remains of your icosphere as if it still was centered. I do show you how to fix this mistake later on in the video, however, if you do end up making it along with me. Also, be sure to change this back to median point after you have done that. Okay, back to the video. First things first, uh, let's scale it all down. So A for all, if it isn't all selected already, and S for scale. I think that's a good size. I'll also move it up a little bit. I can move it up in object mode actually, because I think that's just gonna be a little bit more neater down the road. Okay. So now that I've done that, we're going to add a few modifiers to this. So let's go to our modifier properties menu. I'm gonna add a geometry nodes modifier. So I'm gonna call this one uh, instancer. And we're gonna basically use the geometry nodes to instance uh, this icosphere over here. Let's just, this simple sphere that we started with. So let's jump back to the icosphere here. I'm gonna call this double click planet. And let's go into the, our instancer. Let's bring up our geometry nodes. I'm just going to hover in the corner here and then 
left click and hold and drag up to create a new area. And then I'm gonna come over to the top left hand corner of the screen and change the er editor type to be a geometry node editor. So let's now create our instancer. So what we're gonna do, we're gonna add a point instance. So go down to point, point instance, and place it up here. I'm then going to place, I'm then gonna take the output of this geometry and put it into the geometry input value here. And then I'm gonna choose with this little object picker, my simple sphere. Uh, if I just plug this in, we'll actually see the result. We'll see there's lots of spheres uh, and they're a little bit big. So we're gonna come over to this one, go into edit mode and scale it down to the size that you want. I think that's looking good. Let's just scale it a little bit more. There we go. I think that looks really nice. So let's just jump back into that now. We're then going to create a join geometry node. So let's go to geometry, join geometry, and hover over this wire here. And then once it is lit up, you're going to let go by left clicking. You're going to take the geometry input and you're going to put it into the join geometry node. And that's just going to bring back all of our, our lovely lines because we need them. We need lines. <laughs> so uh, we're still not done though with the instancer just yet because we actually need to do one final thing. And that is we're going to add a transform between this point instance and join geometry nodes. So uh, let's just add a uh, geometry and then transform, hover over here and plus it, plug it in. And then we're gonna add one more node. So we're going to press shift A and that's gonna go to input and get the value. And we're gonna plug this value into the scale and turn it to one. This is gonna become very important uh, later in just a little bit. Essentially what this is doing is it gives us control and is baby, basically uh, we're able to project um, where our stars are in regards to the geometry itself. Uh, now let's add a few more modifiers. The next modifier that we're going to add is a subdivision surface. We're going to make sure that it's set to simple and we're going to bump up the number to maybe five on both. The simple is just gonna make sure that no smoothing using the Catmull Clark method is going to take place. It's gonna stay how it looks essentially. We're then going to create another, we're gonna create a cast modifier and we're gonna cast it into the shape of a sphere with a factor of one. Now, as you can see, when we did that, that actually displaced the result from our instance. And that's why we added that transform. So when we do add that cast, we can just pop back into our geometry nodes and change the value here so that it's matching with uh, the... So I think this is happening because I might have moved uh, the actual nodes themselves somehow. Um, I'm not sure when I did that, uh, but we can fix that up. I think I fixed that up now. So it's a bit nicer. It's not how I really want that to go. Um, what I'm gonna do to fix it up is I'm just gonna drop it down yeah, I don't know how I did that. Essentially, what I did accidentally was I must have moved the object in some way in edit mode so that the center point was no longer on the origin point. It's very, very important that it is on the origin point. One way that we can get it there is by clicking on two opposite vertices and then doing Shift S for snap and snapping 
the cursor to the selected, that's going to select the median point between the two. And then I'm just going to go back into object mode, right click for the object context menu, set origin, origin to 3D cursor, and that should set it all back nicely. So now with that little mistake out of the way, we can jump back in and I can show you what this value node does now. It's going to realign our little dots here. So I'm just gonna make it a little bit bigger so that the uh, stars are on the dots exactly. So 1.1 works for my uh, sphere. Yours is gonna be a little bit different. Now that we've done that, we're gonna add one more modifier to here and that's the skin modifier. Now upon adding it, it's gonna add a really thick skin. Let's go into edit mode by pressing tab. Make sure you have everything selected by pressing A for all. You'll know that you have everything selected if you go into a wireframe mode up here and we can see that everything is indeed selected. And now you're gonna use your control A function. So press control A and A or command A if you're on a Mac and you're going to drag the value down ever so slightly. You don't wanna to go too far because it is subdividing all of this and it's gonna create a very slow computer if you do. Okay, so now we've created our little hyperlanes. So let's go back into our material preview, select our model, come over to the material properties and add a simple hologram. And there we go. We have successfully created a really cool holographic scene for our purposes. I'm also noticing here, it isn't shaded smooth. So we're just gonna come down to here, right click, shade smooth, and then go to our object data properties, auto smooth, just so that those sharp edges are actually sharp. And we might, for the sake of it, also add a lovely bevel modifier to this because bevels make all hard surface objects nicer. And that is a fact. So we're just gonna put a little bevel like so. And I think that looks much nicer. So with, without, with, without. I know which one I'm going for. Okay. Let's take a look at this. So I'm just gonna set my camera to here by using the control alt numpad zero shortcut. I'm just gonna move it to the side slightly. And let's render this out now, function 12. Uh, if you create this scene, definitely share it with me at blendertuts.org, which is my Twitter handle. Couldn't get Blender tutorials, unfortunately. It's been taken by a 10 year old account. <laughs> That doesn't matter though. And if you're interested in this new service and want to get in on the news, subscribe and hit that bell button. And if you don't, subscribe and hit the bell button anyway, if you've really enjoyed the content for more content like this in the future. I'll see you next week. This is Hayden Fousen from blendertutorials.org signing off.